the humble bee. Some would say that humanity owes a lot to these unassuming little fellows. Whether they be contributing to your daily protein intake, fueling a marathon coding session, or instigating the mother of all sugar highs. Beans are at the center of it all. But whereas some beans are small, humble, unassuming, others are completely abstract and the most important concept in spring framework. So let's learn about spring beans. So why is a spring bean called a spring bean? That is a very good question and it will make sense at the end. But to get to that point, we're going to need to start with spring framework first. So perhaps one of the biggest reasons that developers use Spring Framework is that it gives you a nice way to manage dependencies. Oh. No problem, I'll take it from here. You see, software modules often depend on other software modules to do their job. We call these dependencies. There will come a time when you will want to swap out these dependencies for different dependencies. by swapping out some batteries for ones that actually work. They look the same from the outside, but they may do their job in a slightly different way. And that gives our software flexibility. Now, this is all very simple and you only have a single software dependency to manage. But as our software objects grow and so do their dependencies, so does the work to manage them. If only there was a better way. Well, there is, and it's called dependency injection. You can think of dependency injection a little bit like a professional sports team. We're going to use football in this example, or soccer if you're from across the pond, but this metaphor will work for most sports, so think of your favorite. In a game, you have two teams on the field of play. A team is made up of 11 people in the positions of goalkeeper, defenders, midfielders, and forwards. Now, players don't just decide themselves which position they're going to play in, each team also has a manager. It's their job to select the right players going into the game. Just because they use one lineup for this game doesn't mean they can't change it for the next one. Spring Framework is pretty similar. Instead of players in certain positions, you have software objects of a certain type. Richards plays in goal. This software object is of type Fubar Factory. But just like how one player doesn't make a team, you typically need more than one object to build an app. So instead of a team of players, you have a Spring Framework app of different software objects. Some software objects will interact with other software objects and they will be their dependencies. Instead of a manager, you have a Spring container. Just like how a manager picks their team before they play, the Spring container creates the necessary objects at startup, providing them where they're needed, injecting them. Just like how a manager can change their team's lineup, perhaps swapping out one midfielder with a different midfielder, the Spring Container can swap out objects with different objects, as long as they are of the same type. So what does this all have to do with the Mighty Bean? Well, those players from earlier, those software objects, they're beans. And the reason they're called beans is a little bit complicated and it needs a history lesson. You've stuck with me this far, so here goes. During the 17th and 18th century, Java was a major coffee producing region, producing some of the world's best quality coffee beans. Because we like to call things by different names, coffee was often referred to as Java from this point. Java? Java. Fast forward to 1995 and a software development team working on a new programming language codenamed Oak, so called for the tree outside of their office, but around this time they decided that they needed a new name. During a coffee break, the team decided to make a similar mental leap and thus the programming language we now know as Java received its illustrious name. But what about beans? Well, there came a time where developers were creating reusable components with Java, and those reusable components needed a name. If you need to come up with a name for a reusable component using the Java programming language, and Java is coffee and coffee is beans, well, you can see where this is going. Thus, these reusable components were called beans. Fast forward even further, and you have to give a name to the reusable components in the Spring framework. Naturally, you're going to call them spring beans. And the rest, as they say, is history in the making, which is why you shouldn't stop here and check out the Spring Boot for Beginners course right here on YouTube and become the Spring Boot developer that you've always wanted to be. I'll see you over there.